Thank you very much, Harald, for those uh, very nice uh, words. Um, actually, the merit is not mine. The merit is, of course, of the profound uh, scope of the reform project, which is still fascinates me. I read again the scope in the morning, and I'm still fascinated by, by this endeavor. And of course, of our distinguished speakers, it is absolutely an honor for me to be sharing the same room with Professor Swingedo and Professor Homburg, two of the scholars I have admired long part of my career. I know that everybody's eager to start to listen to them, also myself, but just allow me please a brief, very brief introduction using a PowerPoint, just to set up some concepts for the discussion. You know? The, um, the title of the workshop, you know, we are looking at material transformative processes, but there is a powerful underlying idea here, which is to try to challenge, hopefully to overcome this dichotomy between society and nature, this arbitrary separation, which seems to be guiding um, the pro ecological problems that we are facing in the 21 century. So we have to find ways to see how we humans are nature and how society itself is also nature. Um, the reform has three objectives. Uh, Thomas, he mentioned them, just briefly referring to the multidisciplinary theoretical debate, broaden our understanding of single case studies, objective B, uh, using a multi-perspective approach and to develop middle range theories of resources and socio environmental transformation, of course, to apply them in several different disciplines. Uh, some concepts for us to, to set uh, a little bit, what are we talking about within this workshop? The resources are, of course, this comes from reform and also <laughs> from the dictionary. A supply of something that a country, an organization, or a person has and can use, especially to increase their wealth. Our socially produced construction, expressing what people perceive as relevant. And transformation is a complete change in something or someone. And transfiguration is a complete change of form or appearance into something more beautiful or spiritual. This is really interesting because it comes from the dictionary, basically. So these two aesthetic and spiritual dimensions are contained there. And about metabolism, um, this is uh, based, of course, on the approaches of our speakers. You know? um, complex interdependent energy material process ecological historical processes acting as the foundation of material transformations. I like to emphasize here that the way we are using the concept is not a simple metaphor, like saying cells, they have metabolism, therefore we can use this as an analogy. It's basically a concept that can be applied to any system from a cell up to the planet. And most importantly, and you know that the speakers are going to find their own ideas and did it in this sentence, implying the transfiguration of material elements. And this is very important because this produce new entities that are essentially different from the original components. And most of the research done nowadays has been focusing on single components and not looking at what emerges when those components are assembled in a particular manner. Uh, two aspects of the today speaking, I can go into the cartoons and stuff, but we can have a conversation about mm -hmm. that. My students are gonna recognize my cartoons, the Dragon, Aristotle, Newton, and Einstein. Just two ideas here, we're looking at processes that are concatenated, producing new entities, we're going to be seeing that with the speakers today. And also, of course, a very relevant production of this in concatenation is entropy. And this is fundamental law of nature, second law of thermodynamics. When we look at pile components, here you have an example of a demolished building in Brussels. You see clearly that you can compare pile components with the very building. 
Then you look at the way industrial ecology has been understanding this thing. And then there is a, a problem when you are ignoring that the material assemblages, they have a particular purpose and therefore all the effects can link to that, those two dimensions. For that reason, I proposed several years ago, uh, this concept of technomass to propose an operationalization of these transformative processes we are doing in, in, in reality, and it's uh, accounted as the materials have been transformed by human labor, basically. I'm using a similar with ecology, biomass in ecology is largely used to understand how ecosystems they work. Using technomass, we can also do the same thing. Uh, there are two scales that you can actually look at this. I mean, in the full spectrum, of course, this access, this appropriation of things take place at the local level and built in landscapes where raw materials are collected or exploited. This means a specialized workflows, as you see in this diagram here with the example of forest in Southern Patagonia. And this can be upscaled up to the planet as you see in this entanglement here of urbanization patterns as socialized, materialized asymmetries, as we were discussing also with Hara in a recent paper. Um, the workshop has three main questions. I hope that all of you have read the questions and the purpose of the questions is especially to the audience uh, to help in building up a discussion that can help reform to uh, pursue their objectives we were uh, uh, commenting in the very beginning. 